to do today that most people don't want to talk about. Uh, churches don't want to talk about it because churches are telling everyone that you love everyone. And that's not actually true. Uh, God and Jesus, Jesus specifically wants us to show the love of God, the love that God had for Jesus. He wants all of his disciples, everyone that believes in Jesus, to have the same love one to another. That means his disciples, so that when the world looks upon the church, the believers in Jesus, when the world looks on to them, then they're going to go, wow, what love they have one to another. They know that these people are disciples of Jesus. You don't give benefits to the world that Jesus has for his own people. And churches are not preaching that today for some reason. I guess it's because you're getting too much money asking for money to give to the poor who are not Christians. Now, in the Bible it says, remember the poor. And Paul says that the poor is the saints. Remember the poor, the saints. Those are the believers in Jesus only. Don't remember the poor outside in the world. Big difference between the poor in the world and the poor people of God. There's so many churches today that are sending money overseas to help the poor. And they have people in their own church who need help. And they're not supporting them at all. That isn't what Jesus wanted. We're going to talk a little bit about it. How are you treating Jesus? Now you wonder, what does that mean? How are we treating? See, when a believer accepts Jesus, Jesus is in their life. And how you treat that person is how you're treating Jesus. Wow, that... It's a shocker, isn't it? Think of every believer that Jesus is in them. And when you talk to them, how you talk to them, and how you treat them, is how you're actually treating Jesus. Let's, let's find out about that. Matthew 10, 40. He, and this is Jesus talking, He that receiveth you, Believers in Jesus receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. So in other words, if they receive you as a believer in Jesus, they're receiving Jesus. And not only receiving Jesus, but God. That's how you receive God, is through Jesus and by accepting the person that is sent to you or helping you or how you're treating them is not only how you're treating Jesus, the respect of Jesus, but how you're also treating God. And Luke 9, 47, 48 says, And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, <coughs> took a child and set him by him. Because they didn't want the children coming up uh, to be blessed by Jesus. Think of that. There were children in the audience where he was in the congregation. And some of the parents wanted to bring children for blessing, but they were kind of keeping the children back. Thinking that the adults had, were... <laughs> the ones that could talk to Jesus and receive the blessing of Jesus and that the children uh, didn't have that perspective. Jesus really didn't care for children when it came to spirituality. And this is what he said. He said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this child in my name, in my name, 
You can't just go out and pick up any child outside. It's a child in the name that you're doing it in the name of Jesus. So in my name receiveth me. So when you do that with a child of parents that are believers in Jesus and a child that believes in Jesus for blessing, you are receiving Jesus too. When you receive them, you're acknowledging that Jesus is in them and you're receiving Jesus. And it says, and whosoever again shall receive me, receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, the same shall be great. So not only a child, but people that are Christians or newborn Christians are considered children. And when you receive them and you help them, you're doing that in the name of Jesus. You're then also doing it unto Jesus. In Luke 10, 16, He that heareth you, so when you come and you talk in the name of Jesus to someone, and someone listens to you, who do you think they're listening to? They're listening to Jesus. You're a representative. When you get saved and believe in Jesus, you're a representative of Jesus. When, when Jesus had picked me to preach unto you, he sent me. When you listen to me, you're listening to Jesus. That's what the scripture says. He that heareth me, you heareth me. And he that despises you, they don't like what I have to say, they despise Jesus. And he that despises me, despises him that's in me, despises God too. If you need but despise the one that Jesus has sent to preach the gospel or to give a testimony, then you despise Jesus and despise God. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. See how close it is? It's not, you're not repelling a person, you're repelling Jesus. If Jesus sent that person and you reject him, then you're rejecting Jesus and God. Not just Jesus, but you're rejecting Jesus and God. And whoso shall receive one such little child of my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me. And you see that? A little one that believes in Jesus. Not just any little one. Don't go out to the world thinking you're doing it unto Jesus because you did it to a little one. They have to believe in Jesus. Everything done to be done to Jesus or to be received of Jesus has to be done through a believer. Even little ones. It were better off for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea to offend one that believes in Jesus. Whether it's a child or a newborn believer, an adult that's a newborn, because they're also children. And they need milk just like babies do. Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man is come in his glory. And this is the parable that Jesus was talking about. And all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom 
prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So here's the sheep on his right hand, and he goes, hey, I got a kingdom prepared for you. You get to come into my kingdom. And he says, for I was hungry, and you gave me meat. He said, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. So how can you give Jesus something to eat? How can you give something to drink to Jesus? Well, first of all, by paying attention to the minister and not talking, you're respecting Jesus. For you to help someone else that believes in Jesus, what does that mean? If you're helping someone else that believes in Jesus, if you're helping them, then you're helping Jesus, only to a believer. You only can do that to Jesus if they're a believer. You can help them. Wow, you ever think of how I can do something for Jesus? Did you ever wonder that, Gabriel? How can you do something for Jesus? Phoebe, you have to think, how can you do something for Jesus? When you come in this house, whose house is this? CJ, you know whose house this is? Who? It's God's house. And Jesus represents, he's the head of the church. So when we respect his house, we're respecting who? God and Jesus. If we don't respect his house, we treat it like we do any other house then we're disrespecting God. We're disrespecting Jesus. So that's why Jesus has this message. Jesus is trying to tell everyone, how do you treat those that believe in me is how you treat me. How do you disrespect them when they're talking to you about Jesus is how you're treating me. That's what Jesus is saying. So I'm trying to help you not to disrespect Jesus by keeping you from talking and laughing when we're talking about Jesus and God. That's why I asked you to come up because I'm going to... You need to know this because otherwise you're going to not only disrespect Jesus, but Jesus, because you're a believer, is going to chastise and scourge everyone who disobeys him. That's what he does. But if you learn how to respect Jesus, Jesus has a blessing for you. He's going to do something for you, because you're doing something for Him. Man, if I knew this when I was your age, God would have been blessing me so many times because I would have been doing things that He wanted me to do for Him. I would have gotten lots of blessings, more so than I ever did. That's why it's so important to learn what Jesus has to say. But you can't learn it if you're not listening. You can't learn it if you're talking when I'm talking and laughing in God's house. Now it's okay to laugh when the minister is bringing something that may be funny. But it's not funny when you're bringing it yourself. There's a big difference. He said, naked, and ye clothed me. He said, I was sick, 
and you visited me. How could you visit Jesus? When is Jesus sick? When people that believe in him are sick. Gabriel, when you're sick and you ask me to pray for you, Jesus blesses me because I am praying for you with Jesus said, because you're a believer, I'm doing it for Jesus. Do you think I don't want to pray for you? I want to pray for you because I know I'm doing it for Jesus. When people need help that are believers, and you help them that are believers, you're doing it for? Who, CJ? I'm doing it for Jesus, right? You're doing it for Jesus when you help. When you stand out there and you open the door sometimes for people to come in and out, you're doing it for Jesus. That's what Jesus says. That's what it's for. And you will get a blessing for that. He said, uh, you visited me when I was in prison. I went to people that believed in Jesus. They asked me to visit them, and I visited them in prison. Jesus said, when you do that, for believers that believe in me, you're doing it unto me. These are people who want to be visited. Not people who don't want to be visited. Not people that have accepted Jesus and then they turned away from Jesus. These are people who are asking for help. When you do it for people asking for help, then it's a big difference. If they're doing it because they want the help from who? From Jesus. Not just help. If you give them help, doesn't mean anything. It's because they're asking for help from who? From Jesus. How do they ask for help? They have to be in a position where they're asking in a repentance. If they're not in a repentant state, they're not asking for help from Jesus and you shouldn't be helping them. Even if they're saved. Period. There's no blessing in that. And you're hurting the chastisement and scourging that Jesus is giving. You're hurting that if you're not doing it for Jesus. If they're not asking for Jesus' help, you don't give it. And the righteous are going. They answered him saying, Lord, when, when do we see thee hungry? And fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink. And we saw thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee. And when saw we sick or in prison or came unto thee? How did we do that to you, Jesus? How? Again. This is what Jesus is going to say. Are you listening? This is what Jesus is going to say. They wanted to know how did they do it to Jesus. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, those that believe in me, even the least of them, you've done it unto me. You see that? Even the very least of believers in Jesus, when you do something to help them because they need help, they're asking for help from Jesus and you do it for them 
You did it unto Jesus. Wow. When you help me when I'm in there, when you help any of the believers that are in the hall, sometimes they ask you to do something for them and you do it. You're doing it unto Jesus. Wow. Sometimes, Gabriel, you ask me what I want to drink in there and you give me something to drink. You did that unto Jesus. Same thing with you, Phoebe. And the same thing would be for you also, CJ. And do you get a blessing from that? Yes. Jesus will give you a blessing. This is so important to know this. Had I known it when I was your age, I would have got so many more blessings from Jesus. But then shall he say to those on the left, he said, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And I was, for I was hungry. I was hungry, it said. And he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and he took me not in, naked, and he clothed me not sick, and in prison, and he visited me not. You can't help people thinking you're going to be helping Jesus, thinking you're going to get a blessing when they're not believers. You can't just do that to anybody on the street who are not believing in Jesus. And if they're a believer in Jesus and they're on the street begging, the scripture says, I have never seen the forsaken, the, those that are believers in Jesus forsaken. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I've never seen that. Why? Because if they're out there doing that, they don't want help from Jesus. They really don't want any help. Because if they did, they would be in a repentant state. Remember that. If you want help from Jesus, you're going to be in a repentant state. That means that you'll get out of the gutter you're in to be helped. Not stay in the gutter. Big difference. And then I answer him saying, Lord, when did we see thee hungry and a third or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall they answer them saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, that means believers, those that are in a repentant state who wants help from Jesus, not just any believer either, but only those that are in a repentant state, asking for help from who? From Jesus. And since you didn't do it to anyone who was asking for help from Jesus, then you didn't do it unto Jesus at all. At all. And those shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You're all children of God in Christ Jesus. Those that believe in Jesus. But you can be saved and walk away from your faith in Jesus. You can be saved and walk away from that. Should you be helping people that walk away from Jesus? No! Why? Because you're hurting Jesus from chastising and scourging them. 
You're working against Jesus. Completely. Should I help those that are not believers in Jesus? Absolutely not. How, why are you helping them when the purpose is for them to see what Jesus is blessing you and helping you with for them to want Jesus? Why are you helping them? Never, ever should you be helping people that are not believers in Jesus. Ever. Wow. Or believers or ones that are saved that are in should be in a repentant state. For as many of you have been baptized in Christ, have put on Christ. If you're walking in the light of Christ, not if you're not, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, there's neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Then there was one said, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desire to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto them, Jesus answered and said this, Who is my mother? Just because your blood doesn't make them your mother, spiritually, doesn't make them someone who you should be giving benefits to if they're not wanting to serve Jesus. Wow. He said, who is my mother? Who are my brethren? Jesus is saying this. And he stretched forth his hands towards his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. And he has a statement that makes them his mother and brethren and sisters. He has a statement. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Only those who are doing the will. When they're not doing God's will, they walked away from, they don't want to talk about Jesus no more. They don't want to go to church anymore. Are you going to help them? No! Absolutely not! Are you to be friends with them? Absolutely not! No! The Bible is really clear. Why is it not clear in our mind? The Bible, you just don't help every Tom, Dick, and Harry out on the street. Why would you do that? You would help those who are believers in Jesus, who wants Jesus' help. That's why they serve Him. That's why they keep His will, His commandments, and they do His will. Because they want Jesus' help. That's who you help. You don't want to help anybody else out there. Wow. We're defeating the purpose of Jesus. We're defeating the purpose of the world coming to Jesus. Why? Because they receive benefits. You're giving them benefits of Jesus only gives to those who serve him. Why are you doing that? Why would anyone do that? Go against Jesus and what he wants. 
How do you treat your brothers and sisters to Jesus when they're doing wrong? How do you treat them? But now I've written unto you not to keep company. See, when they're not serving Jesus, why are you keeping company with them? Why are you trying to be friends with them? Who is called a brother, be a fornicator, or a covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner? With such a one, no, no, not to eat. No! Not to go out and be friends with them. And, oh, let's go out and let's talk. What in the world are you talking about? Jesus said that to you? Absolutely not. Never, ever would Jesus ever tell you to help someone who doesn't want Jesus. Who's not in a repentant state. Who wants Jesus after they sinned against Jesus and were a believer and sinned against him. Are you to help them? Unless they're in a repentant state? Absolutely not. Never. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them with don't don't I give you enough scripture to judge those within that are believers in Jesus? That's what he's saying. Man alive. You need to be able to judge and know who to help. You just don't help every Tom Dick and Harry out there. <laughs> But them that are without, that are not believers in Jesus, God judges them. But you better be judging those within. There's many benefits of being a brother and a sister in Jesus. Many benefits. Because you're a believer in Jesus, I want to help you. I want to help CJ. I want to help Gabriel. I want to help Phoebe. I want to help Nick, and, and I want to help Bane and Wendy, and I want to help you too. And Brad back there, I want to help if I can. He's usually always helping me, but I want to help him too. Right? There's Katie, <laughs> Diana. But there's no benefits from the family of Jesus if they're not putting Jesus first in their life. There's no benefits. Let's repeat this again. There are no benefits from the family of Jesus if a brother or sister is not putting Jesus first in their lives. So how do we know when Jesus considers them brothers and sisters? For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Just because they're saved don't make them your brother or sister. Just because they are gotten saved doesn't mean you help them. And if you don't help them, why in the world are you helping the world? You need to take responsibility and start checking out who you're supposed to be helping. Only those that do the will. They believe in Jesus and are doing His will. God in Jesus is good.